Do you have any idea what my fact or my little the reason why we're doing Federated States of Micronesia? Do you have any idea what it is? No, I don't actually. No? Because you mentioned your earlier uh, you mentioned that you're listening to a lot more Hello Internet. Yeah, I've been going back through some older episodes as it's been on break for ages. I just miss it. See, it kind of ties in to the fact. Do you know how domains work, like website domains? You now there's like .com, .co.uk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the .uk, a lot of them have like dot .something. If it's two, normally that means it's a country code. If it's three or more, that's a general one. So like yeah. .com isn't linked to any country. Yeah, like if you've got like UK, so UK, UK US, New, New Zealand. Yeah. Um, guess what the one for Federated States of Micronesia is? No, what? Dot .fm. Dot .fm. <laughs> Which is why Hello Internet dot .fm. It just ties into the radio thing. <laughs> is, that, is that why you want to do this episode? Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's dot .fm. Yeah, because I've been using anchor.fm to do this. And I was like, I know that two letters means there's a country one. Which country is it? Oh, Federated States of Micronesia. What's this about? Oh, so it's part of the United States. It's not part of the United States? What happened there? Oh, yeah. Is it part or is it not part, Scott? Well, I mean, if you turn around to me and say, what's a country that has a constitution which outlays three separate but equal branches of government, executive, uh, legislative, and judicial justice? Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, you're pretty much describing the American politics system. It even looks the bloody same. Yeah. If you go onto their website, like the logo for the department or the logo for the Congress of the Federated States of Micronesia yeah. looks incredibly like the F- Congress of the United States of America, yeah. if that makes sense. It's even got a really long sort of like... United like because they States use like America a Congress and like States senators and stuff, don't they? Yeah, it's just, it's like a weird... Their political system is very, very similar to the U.S., like to the point where they have senators and they have governors and they have like if you took uh, the US government as a template and then tried to apply it to a smaller country the end result is very nearly the Federated States of Micronesia yeah yeah, they do have um because they even they even use the whole state method as well and each state has yeah. governors and representatives for each state do you know what all the four states are? I do know what all the four states are, Scott. This is just my evil way of making you pronounce something that's unpronounceable. They're uh, Yap, Chuk, Pompey, and Corusay. Very good. We'll see if you're right with that. I think that's how you pronounce it. That's how I've heard them said, so I'm going to go with that. One thing I found out um, just literally before you came over, it is not all plain sailing in the Federated States of Micronesia. Chuk is applying for independence. They're having a referendum to see if they can break away. Oh, yeah, actually? Yeah. Um, they've been trying to do it since 2016 uh, or 2015, but they keep on postponing it. So that it was postponed from, I think it was 2016, that's what's coming to me. Um, 2016, it was postponed to 2019, then postponed again to 2020, and now it's been postponed to 2022. So there, there may be a future of <laughs> we'll just keep Chuck and the Federated States of Micronesia. They'll just keep getting passed down the line, won't it? Yeah. Yeah, they're just kicking the can down the road. Because <laughs> it's not like... it's um, The reason for it was because they're so different culturally. Because they're all very... Like, all the four sort of states yeah. are so diverse. They are, yeah. Because they've all just sort of like they have the common heritage, but then they've just sort of like sprawled out. Well, that's because originally when there was uh, the native people came to them, the various islands, it was just that, just lots of different Micronesian people coming in and just settling the land. Yeah. All on different islands without really going to the other islands too often. So you have this like huge, like diverging, like cultures basically they have like over like 50 languages there and stuff and like they're not intelligible either they're not like mutually intelligible like some european languages are they are like completely different yeah but and they, they um, like develop different like religious systems and stuff like that as well yeah it's mostly christian isn't it where it, now it is yeah and it sort of goes from is it east to west protestant to catholic 
Yeah. It was quite surprising to me, but I guess not so surprising when because you look at the the ties that has the United States of America. But even though they have all of the different like there's like fifty languages that are like eight I think there's eight or twelve like commonly spoken ones that are still alive today and indigenous sort of thing. Yeah. English is the common language across all of them. Yeah, that'd be like known as like the lingua franca, are they usually called. Oh yeah. A lingua franca is like a language that is used as like your second language to communicate with other people. Yeah. Well, they used to use, I think it was Spanish, because, hey, for once, the UK has had nothing to do with the Federated States of Micronesia. The only people that have screwed the Federated States of Micronesia over are Spain, United States, kind of China. Who's the other one? Uh, Germany and Japan. (laughs) Germany, Japan, that was the one. They were under Japanese rule, because if you go back, like, at the start of World War One, if I remember right. Well, if we, if we go back to it from when the Spanish arrived, and then yeah. we can go through to when the mm-hmm. uh, Japanese arrived, if you want. So, in the 1500s, the first ones that came was actually the Portuguese, and they was to look for the Spice Islands of Indonesia, but then they didn't, um, obviously, they didn't find them there, so they carried on going. Then the Spanish came... Um, took over them and put them under the Captaincy General of the Philippines from 1574 to 1899. Then in 1899, they were sold, the Spanish sold the islands to the Germans as part of German New Guinea, and that was from 1899 to 1919. Obviously, that's the end of the... Yeah, really, 1919, yeah. Yeah. Well, because didn't Japan... Because I forget this, Japan in the First World War was our ally. They helped fight against Germany. So they were kept under Japanese rule, I believe, for quite a while. They were invaded by the Japanese in 1914, basically until uh, 1947. Mm. Because after the war, it became part of the South Seas Mandate. Yeah, that's why a lot of the sort of elderly generation there will speak Japanese still, rather than English. So there's also that sort of a divide. Because of the Japanese occupation, they're all taught Japanese. And then the U.S. got involved with the um, tran the union that they did, the the treaty of um, what was it, the treaty of or something. Well, so with, with the South Seas Mandate, that was just like the the way of naming the the region, the the Japanese imperial occupation, so it's part of the Japanese Empire. But after World War Two, so in 1947, is when the um, it all got put under the trust um, territory of the Pacific Islands. That's the one I'm about, yeah. That's when they started teaching English in the schools. So there's a sort of like a divide between elderly people speaking Japanese because they were from the Japanese occupation and then people speaking English because they're in the US slash sort of just English speaking. Yeah. Part. But even like when they're doing sort of business in government, they'll use English as their language. Um, and I found out just that they stream it all like you can go and watch congress meetings of the federated states of micronesia if you want to it's in english oh they kind of do similar stuff here when they like they stream parliament and stuff don't they so so basically that whole trust treaty of the pacific islands was like the islands becoming which not just micronesia like all the islands in the pacific kind of being like taken away from their imperial owners and being able to like sort of sustain themselves to a point and that, but with heavy supervision from the US, so that's why a lot yeah. of them did develop the US systems. And like you say, they speak English, they use the American dollar. Um, but then they, um, they um, voted to become a free associate state in 1986. Yeah, so that's like, I was actually looking into this because it's such an interesting sort of like situation because the United States currently pay the Federated States of Micronesia a crap ton of money. And the entire reason why they do is to stop. They wanted to have like control their ships and their sort of like naval navy and their defense in that area because it's quite a good strategic region to be in the Pacific Ocean to have like a lot of control of that. So and if they didn't, if the US didn't, then China could, or yeah, Russia could, yeah. or even Australia underneath could, yeah. And so I think it was one hundred and ten billion dollars. I think the US pay the Federated States of Micronesia just so that they can provide them with defense yeah it's like a weird mob boss thing 
but reversed. <laughs> we'll pay you to secure you. Yeah. Like, it's such a weird situation. It just gives them, like, physical, like, global positioning, doesn't it? Mm. It's like, they're right there, aren't they? Yeah. And that's they why can they have... easily launch, um, like, missiles or ships and stuff. Yeah. To, to um, China, basically, is what they will hold it off. Yeah. It's like they always have one of the giant... Um, Aircraft carriers at all times, don't they? Sailing around. So they need a place to launch them from and stuff. Which is an interesting little relationship because, like, Compact of Free Association stuff is why um, the Chuck referendum to independence is such an interesting thing because they're the most populous region. They're the sort of, like, largest Well, state. yeah, they have the biggest city in all of uh, Micronesia, mm. which is Weno. Yeah, but that's not the, where the capital space, is it? No, the capital Cap- is, yeah. is Palika in Pompeii. But if they, if Chuck decide to become independent, it kind of screws the game up because that would then enable them to deal with their own defense, which means they could either go for another compact of free association with America, or they could start forming an agreement with China, which then completely devalues the the point of having the Federated States of Micronesia with America because um... China's already there. Not not entirely, because as bad as it would sound, it would be used as like a buffer state. Mm. It'd be used almost like as a proxy war. That's what you'd probably see happen. You would start seeing the truck maybe going to war with the rest of the Federated States of Micronesia. Mm. Which, for now, I'm just going to call it Micronesia. Yeah. <laughs> which is easier. You will, you will, um, yeah, you would basically see them go to war. You reckon? Yeah, yeah that's what the US does, isn't it? It fights proxy wars. Oh, that's a hard take right there. <laughs> what? Ooh. Vietnam, Korea, Syria, none of those are proxy wars. <laughs> oh, I don't know about this. Afghanistan, no. we've gone, We've gone political again. <laughs> um, the other reason why Chuck was looking to sort of become its own independent nation is because we mentioned about the sort of weirdly American political system. Um, and Chuck is fairly underrepresented in their... Congress, okay. because the way it works is um, each each state gets one member of Congress, and then the rest is dis- distributed via population, kind of like America. Just saying, <laughs> it's kind of the exact same, but um, Pompey um, gets one extra. Um, there's 10 others. This is so, it's like, oh, it's almost adorable. It's like, oh, yeah, your Congress has 14 people in it. Oh, <laughs> but it's like they have one from each state and then the rest of the 10 are distributed between them. And it must be... Wait, there's only a, about 100,000 people that live there in total. And 50,000 of them live in Chuk. Yeah. Which means that really it should get 50% of the representation. But it doesn't. It only has, um, in total, including their one, it has six out of the 14 members of Congress are from Chuck. So it's just slightly underrepresented than places like Pompeii, where a vote in Pompeii will mean double what a vote in Chuck will mean, if that makes sense. Yeah. Which is the same as the US. But yeah. that, the only trouble with that is, is like then you just get these giant cities that can like dominate the entire political scene and Mm -hmm. then like the rest of the country doesn't like you have that here where london dominates all the political issues and more northern towns and cities barely get a say yeah barely get anything to have a system which is represented by population is very beneficial to places with large cities which place has the largest city in all of micronesia Uh, yeah when so that's why they're in favor of having a more representative or sort of like more thingy, a more thingy political system. What's the fucking word I'm looking for? <laughs> but if you're trying to convey that, what like a more represent, more representative well, it's democracy? Not representative because it is representative. Because but it's more like it's more of a direct democracy in it. If it's like every person's vote matters the exact same. Yeah. So it's less direct. Yeah. Which speaking of less direct, this is all going to be about their political system, like. <laughs> But so it's fairly, it's fairly interesting. It's so interesting to me. Um, the just the fact is that it's 
out in the middle of the Pacific, these little islands which are like yeah, got an, an American. Who votes for the president? Have you found this in your research? The Electoral College. It's not the Electoral College. I thought you meant College. the U. I thought you meant no, the U.S. No, government. in in, Marcone- Mar- ugh. in Micronesia, who votes for the president? I'm Adrian? not sure. The Congress do. The Congress do. Yeah. So fourteen people decide the president. How mad is that? Yeah. yeah. Well, hundred thousand yeah. citizens. Fourteen of them. Because because they say it's a representative democracy, and so you vote for your dude, mm. and then he goes in, and then he votes. But as far as I can see, and I'm pretty sure about this, there are no political parties. They're all independent. They all go on a non-partisan basis, yeah. Mm. No one really aligns with a political party. Everyone's like almost an independent. So when you're voting for your guy, how do you... You don't know if they are going to vote any particular person in. So you really are... It's, it's, I mean, it's very representative because they're voting for the person they actually want to do the job that they're meant to do. Yeah, they're not voting on like party lines. Exactly. Well. Like I hate part party politics. If I could make one change to this world, I'd abolish political parties because all it does is sort of set people in. As, at least the first past the post. Yeah. It sets people in a two way system of equally shit. Where really, I mean, nobody wanted Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton to be prime mm. minister of the US. Nobody wanted Boris Johnson. I mean, nobody wanted him prime minister. He didn't vote in. Who was the one before him? Boris Johnson to get voted in. Did he? When? Last December. Who was this? Who was the person against them? Jeremy Corbyn. Oh, that one. I yeah. thought. Was that just last December? Yeah. How? It's been a, it's been a long year, hasn't <laughs> it? Long time. It was man. before the dark times, Scott. How? Who knows what happened what? to? I thought that was in like... The flow of time during the dark times. I swear so. that was 2010. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Fucking hell. No. Um, but yeah, so... Alright. But who would have wanted... If if any person in this world was given the actual choice between two people, would Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn have been top of anyone's list? No. Well, it's like that South Park joke, isn't it? Where it's like, it's always a vote between a douche and a turd sandwich. Yeah. A giant douche and a turd sandwich. Exactly. Hello, so it's just a quick one this time to remind you we've got a Twitter at Robsmap and a Reddit r slash Robsmap. On the Twitter specifically, we're going to be doing a fact of the day um, curated by Rob. Check that out if you want. Uh, that's it. Bye. So the flag. The flag. Everyone's favourite segment of the show. And my hmm. favourite segment. Yeah, it is my favourite segment. To be fair. It's the flag. Yes. So if I'm right, the, the flag from Micronesia is a very light blue mm-hmm. background with yeah. the four stars to represent the four. Interesting how they've used stars to represent states on their flag. It's almost like they took inspiration from it's a pretty unique giant... Idea. <laughs> it's a pretty unique idea. I'd go yeah. that. <laughs> totally unlike America. Well, yeah. Um, well, at first, because obviously a, a lot of these... um, A lot of these... St- countries in Oceania that use stars. Germany used the stars as like to represent the Southern Cross. So I was quite like interested to find out that it didn't represent any form of like celestial pattern. It was literally to represent each state. Yeah. Which is um I mean, to be fair, it's not only America does that because I think the EU flag is just all the states in America uh, all the states in the EU is in a circle, isn't it? But um I don't know, do you know where the, the flag comes from? Do you know what its origin is? Or... So I don't know. I'll be honest, I looked at the flag and I was like, right, I, I can see exactly the story of that flag. Like, it's a very simple, I like it, because it's very simple. But at the same time, I looked at it and thinking, there's no story behind this. Like, there's It looks very, this... very, very corporate, very, very safe. It's just there, like, exactly. it's we like... live on the ocean and we've got four states. Yeah, it's like so. It's just a, a a light blue flag with four white stars arranged in the diamond pattern. Which the diamond pattern? I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Rather than having like as a square, but like, it's not like what are they gonna do when Chuck leaves? Yeah, no, they're gonna three have three stars. Which stars they... Chuck? Exactly. Which star is Chuck? They should have just had the names <laughs> written across the flags. So you know. They're going to have to redesign a three-star flag. 
to make it try. It's oh. like if you've seen all those like fifty-one state U.S. flags oh, and all I those cool them. designs. And I hate them. But a three-star flag would make a triangle, and I'm just thinking of it in my head, and that looks kind of dope. That looks kind of cool. The little like triangle, like yeah. the tri-state area type triangle flags. That's all. Oh, oh, that's good. Yeah, I like that. Or or they could then split it into like the three bar thing and have a different colour for each state. Like a tri-colour flag. Yeah. I wonder what three colours they choose. Probably oh. red, white and blue. <laughs> <laughs> they would definitely choose blue. Yeah. What do you reckon the other two colours would be? Wow. Actually, let's, let's do this. So if you, let's redesign. Let's redesign the micro, Federated States of Micronesia flag if Chuck leaves. Now, I think the best way of doing it is three vertical stripes. So your typical thing. vertical tricolour, like, yeah. like uh, France well, or something. Let's face it, looking at their flag now, they obviously like basic. Um, so we'll go from... If we go from... Actually, that also works from east to west in terms of the states. Mm-hmm. So what's the most easterly state? most eastern state is Corsay. Corsay. Um, what colour represents them, do you reckon? <laughs> I, like, just, I, like, <laughs> I like the look of um, um, <laughs> questions I didn't think I'd be asked. Um, I'm going to give them grey. I'm going to give them grey because they're, the, they're that lone wolf state out there by themselves. Yep. Yeah. Fair enough. Pompeii would be... Well, Pompeii is the capital, isn't it? Yeah, that's so where the capital really is. That's got to be great because it's diplomatic. And then what's the third one? Well, those big stones and that. Oh, those the big, big rice the stones. Big stones, they're all great. They were great too. They were great too, and so was the, there was a palace. So okay, I'm going to so go. It's going to be a tricolor flag of grey, grey, and grey. Grey. <laughs> Sold it. We've made it more businessy. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So before. Before we get further into it, I'd probably want to go through the the difference between like Micronesia and like the Federate States of Micronesia. So I think I can take a guess at this. Okay, go Isn't for it. Isn't Micronesia sort of the geographical location in the Pacific Ocean, and then the Federate States of Micronesia is a collection of islands, but not all of the islands in the Federate in not all the islands in Micronesia are in the Federated States of Micronesia. Because you've got like three or four, like the Marshall Islands, are uh, in Micronesia, but not in the Federated States. Yeah, Micronesia. exactly. Right? It's, a, it's exactly it's a geographical term, not a, like a political term. So yeah, you're right. So there are like the parts of the Marshall I- Islands, um, Palau, um, even some of Kiribati on the other on the other side, all make up the area known as Micronesia. M- most of the Federated States of Micronesia will cover. Islands known as the Caroline Islands. Some end up in Palau, but a lot of them are covered by um, the Federated States. And then you have the four states, which we said earlier were like Yap, Chuk, Pompeii, and Corisse. And they're basically island clusters, like lots of different islands making up one state, as apart from Corisse, which tends to be just like one island. Mm-hmm. And it's generally made of, like, like I say, lots of tiny little islands, lots of atolls. This stuff is. Like that. I can't wait. I was trying to think of a pun all day. Like, it takes a toll on something. <laughs> There's got to be a good pun. It takes a toll on something. I know. Like, that's like the seed of a joke, but I reckon that joke will be amazing if we can think of it. <laughs> Later when we have a smoke, we'll, we'll think of this. <laughs> this pun, and then that will be the title of the episode. That'll be the title of the episode. Yeah. I mean, there's the over there's the overfishing, isn't there? Sorry. There's the overfishing that's been happening there lately. Oh, is there? Yeah. That must take a toll on the people. <laughs> it takes a toll on the fish. But yeah, like um, the overfishing is like, because basically, as you can imagine, from like an island nation, as we were saying with like Iceland, a lot of their thing is from fishing. A lot of their income is from fishing. A lot of their trade. Mm. But what they start to do now is because there's only about hundred thousand people that live in the entirety of Micronesia so it's just they're like you're not going to get that many fishermen and that much fish fishing done so you'll be a relatively poor country so what they have done now start selling out annual passes and like seasonal passes to other countries to fish in their waters because obviously 
they claim a huge amount of water, don't they? As we we were talking before about like not cool like miles and like economic exclusion zones. Because it's so many different little islands all over the place, the economic exclusion zone is like huge. They're like the fourteenth largest one in the world. But they've got to a point now with um overfishing's becoming like quite bad. So now they have these non profit organizations with fairly strict like fishing regulations. Of like you can only catch fish with a certain size of usually as well they like to do it like off a certain fishing method as well. How do they even govern that? Because surely like, like how do you not catch fish that are larger than a certain size? How You're supposed to frown back. What, Ned? Well no, you catch a fish and then if it this is another thing as well, they don't want you to use fishing like trawlers as much. They would prefer people to line fish and stuff. Right. But that takes a lot more time. Yeah, there, but they'll sell those. They'll, they'll, there's a non-profit organization that'll buy them at more of a premium price. Oh, right. To um, help with the... Curtail it. Yeah. Because otherwise you just get loads of fish just being killed at a very young age. So it, it just dwindles the, fishing popul- the fish population. Right. It's like... It's almost like they need to have a year out to let it grow back again. And that then, kind of stuff. Well, you're supposed to do things like that. Like that yeah. is what was done in the past. But like now, because the, the fish industry has been so industrialized, yeah, and you can fish all year round, and you can fish like an insane amount with these giant trawlers and stuff. That the fish population never bounces back to quite the way it was before. Yeah, because I I take it it's done in like seasons, isn't it? So like there's a fishing season and a non-fishing season. Yeah. But they do so much in the fishing season that they don't allow it enough time to recuperate. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, but it is one of their bigger exports is those licenses because of... The thing with their population is is that um, they have more people that leave than stay there. So even they've got like a fairly high birth rate, a lot of people like leave the island to go to... Because obviously as their free association state of America... You can go live and work in America and study in that. Yeah. And a lot of people don't come back then. So, like, they, people go to school there, go to an American school, and just basically never come back. So it's a weird thing where it's sort of, like, almost a drain on their economy because the people grow up using the education that's provided for them by Micronesia. Yeah. Then go to America and earn money there and make money yeah. there and add value to that country. So it's like... Yeah. They're educating people to then just leave. Basically, yeah. Um, or become part of the very small American government. <laughs> yeah, the very small. This is int- but it does seem like Micronesia is like still... It seems like the small islands, like... It's the same with Iceland, where it's... It's such a small island on like... If it were to be invaded, they'd have no hope of helping themselves. But because of their political strength, because they're in that place particularly, they're able to leverage sort of power from other places. Well, yeah, because they're free associate with, with the US. Yeah. The US, the only reason the U, the US that, military is the military they use. And the only reason for that is because of the fact that they're in a good political place. Kind of like Iceland was in a very good political place between Russia and America. To sort of be a... Um, like a buffer state again. Kind of like a buffer state, but it's like more of a... Like America would rather have it under their control than under a foreign power's control because it's strategically advantageous. Yeah, yeah. Advantageous. Advantageous. <laughs> See, I can't pronounce English, let alone Chuck. Chuckies. Chuckies. Can you pronounce any of these names of their languages then, Scott? I tell you what, that's because you've got a list of the most common languages, right? Yeah, the most like commonly spoken I'm just one go... in descending order as well. So I'm just gonna go. Oh, so it's the most popular at the top, right? I'm yeah. gonna go for it, right? So, oh, this is gonna get us like slated. <laughs> oh, what is that? Nah, 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 nah. I've given up already. I've looked at thirteen. But oh yeah, no. There's actually something interesting about that. A particular island, though. All right, so I'll go through it. So it's Chuckies. Yeah. Pompeian. Yeah. 
Kosserin. I'd probably say Kosserian. 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 Yeah, I get that. Mortalockies. Yeah, I'd go that. Mort- Mort- Mortalockies or something like that. Yappies. Yeah. That's so great. Yappies. Yappies. That's what they speak on Yap, Scott. Yeah, I, I, I gathered. <laughs> um, a lithian. Yeah. Capping. <laughs> the and sand out over there. Capagadaraja. I'd probably say Capinga Marangi. Capinga Ramagi. That's probably what I'd go for. Jesus. Pingali peas? Pingali peas? <laughs> Pingali peas? Yeah. Is that actually it? Pingali peas? Pingali peas, yeah. Amazing. Wallian. Yeah. Um, Mokalis. Pull what? Nuku. Nuku. Nuku Uru. Yeah, I'll probably go Nuku Oro. Nuku Oro. Nagatesis. I'll probably go Nagatak. Yeah, Nagatakis. Um, and Satawalis. Yeah, Satawalis. None of that was right. We've just wasted the eardrums of <laughs> so many people. Anyone who hears that, there's yeah. no reason for me to have done that. What was your interesting thing about 13 um, <laughs> Kalamangri cool? Oh, Kaparam Marangi? Yeah, that one. Well, that island is one of the few islands that are still claimed by the Spanish. So right. still to this day, they d- the Micronesia does have an ongoing dispute with the Spanish over the, the island. All right, how do you know, is that sort of like populated? Like, are there people living there? Yeah, there are people living there. They have a language, Scott. <laughs> some, some, uh, some, yeah, some of the list of languages. <laughs> God damn it. But um, do yeah. they have a Spanish citizenship and a Micronesian citizenship? I don't citizenship? think so. Because if they're claimed by both, it could be very weird for Spain... To have people there and not be Spanish citizens. The, the thing is, though, it's basically when the Spanish sold the islands to the Germans at the end of the uh, 19th century, mm. they claim they saw, they didn't sell that island in particular. And why? that's the ongoing dispute. I wonder why. Is there anything interesting? Sorry, I haven't. Is there anything interesting about Yap? I think just like Yap. Yap's like the religious home of it all. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yap is like they're all like super old, but that's where like one of the older like stories come from. A lot of the older religions, and I think that's where Narmadal is. Narmadal. Yeah. What's that? Narmadal. This is now it's an ancient historical site, and it's protected by their government. Mm. It's referred to now as the Venice of the Pacific by some people. I've just realised what I was thinking. I thought you meant Notre Dame. <laughs> oh, no, I was so confused. For yeah, not Shadam, you know. Yeah, I thought that's in that's in the after, uh, after it burned down, they in, moved it to Yap. It's in Micronesia, <laughs> really? They thought it'd be safer out there. Oh, I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> this is the this is a new recurring segment of the podcast. Scott's dumb. <laughs> What's the what? What was it? Nan Nan something. Nan Madal. Yeah. Yeah, like I say, it's sometimes referred to as the Venice of the Pacific. So it's like an ancient, it's like an ancient temple, like sort of ancient palace, basically. Basically, <laughs> it's like an ancient palace uh, with loads of like waterways and canals and like bridges to go from um, the little island to island and stuff. All right. Oh, that's really cool. So they've like they've interconnected them, like. Between islands. Well, these are like very small, basically not even islands. So I'd say little islets. It's within Yap. Islets. Yeah. I didn't know that was a word. Little tiny islands. Is there any atolls there? <laughs> sort of atolls around, but so they have all the, like they have all these like canals and like and this would have been built like in the 12th century possibly. Oh yeah. So it's pretty. Um, Pretty interesting, like work how they built these all these canals and all these 
these giant buildings and these um no no they're not giant but they're like they are like palace size things and stuff. Yeah. And the legend goes is that it was the two two brothers came to the island, um, built a structure to worship their god of agriculture. Oh right. And the way they did it was via sorcery and the help of a dragon. What is this about dragons? They come up everywhere. Dragons come up everywhere. Like you look at any country, any like mythology, anything, dragons will come up. But it's like surely dragons they've... are like universal. They all look different and have different origins and mean different things. But the term dragon comes up a lot. So it must have been a thing. Surely, you have <laughs> it that must have many, been. A... Have that many people thinking about dragons without like, dragons being a thing like because well, the chinese like dragons don't they they're, they're pretty f- good for dragons yeah they're, they're like way. we like dragons we do um but we have a different type of dragon to the chinese but it's still dragon kind of but they look different so a china in, in the chinese dragon's more serpent like isn't it yeah because they've got no legs and the european dragon's more like Dinosaur like, like more what like, is it? well, it's on like four legs with the big wings and that. It? That's a weird dragon. What the European dragon? Yeah, I can I can live with the Chinese dragon. You know, seeing like the typical like European dragon, like no. that's on the Welsh flag and stuff. Oh, that type. Of, the basically that's I don't feel like that's a dragon. But you know, a dragon on like four How legs with giant wings, dragon? huh? How's that different drag dragon? It's not. That's what I mean. We have we have like we have the European one. In the UK, yeah, well, yeah, isn't it? Like when we typically think of dragons in the UK. Yeah, I thought you were saying that we have a different one to Europe. No, <laughs> no, I'm saying like a European and like an Eastern dragon. Oh fuck! No, let's just let's... an Oc- an Occidental and Oriental dragon. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Uh, our dragons are like um, generally monsters. Yeah, things to pe- for people to slay. Yeah, like you have like the dragon and like stuff like Beowulf and things like that. Things like hoarding treasures that we go to kill. Smaug. Yeah, exactly. And then the a Chinese dragon is like a god almost. Oh, that's interesting. But, well, they basically, yeah, they're like, they are divine. They are godly. They're not necessarily evil as well. You will like worship the dragons and like they can be kind and stuff. We associate fire with dragons and they typically associate... um. Water well, with dragons? Water, really? That's interesting. Because like, you think about... To me, a dragon is a fire-breathing dragon. Like, that's just what they are. But Aside in... from in Pokemon, but... <laughs> yeah, and sometimes they in Pokemon. In like, Pokemon, they're like, they do everything. Anything. Like, gods are like space and time. <laughs> yeah. That's mad. But yeah. But... So, they... They use it with the help of a dragon... Uh, they built loads of canals to interconnect the islands. Yeah. And it's just sort of, I guess, been preserved over time. Yeah. And now it's um, regarded as like a... Like one of those World Heritage sites, so you can't... The eighth wonder of the world. That kind of thing, yeah. Another um, thing that, they, that was used on Yap was the ancient form of their currency. Right. Have you heard of their old currency? I've heard a little bit. Of the rye stones? Yeah. Just massive, massive stones. Well, average day-to-day, you would have tiny little, like, coin-sized stones. But the Yap then decided to import these giant stones up to, like, four metres in diameter. Right. It's a form of currency from Palau and Guam, Mm -hmm. because they have, like, higher... Deposits of limestone now, so they can carve more stuff, and then they would trade it to the app. Yeah. And you would have these massive, like, f- diameter massive. of, like, four-meter stone carved to look like a coin. Yeah. But you wouldn't physically trade ownership of the stone. I was going to say, because that made going to the shop a bit difficult. <laughs> yeah, go Imagine to... just going to the shop with a pocket full of four-meter stone. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, wheelbarrows just rolling them down. No, so what, what was it like? How did they? Well, make... I think you're. I think you're particularly find this interesting because it's basically the form of current money we have in a way, where the stones were ownership of the stone was transferred. The stone wasn't physically moved. 
But we just all agree. So if I got my big stone, I want to buy some of you, my giant rye stone. I, we just, everyone agrees that I've transferred the ownership of the stone to you. Oh, that is. And now it's yours and now you have that wealth. That's Just crazy. kind of how money works today, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, like the Bank of England has a massive amount of gold underneath the thing and we're just sort of like, like on, on the pound, on the sort of like, on the notes, it says we don't actually have the money. The money is, um, oh, I'm going to look up the quote. It's like the queen gives this person £20 in exchange for this. Like you can turn around to the Bank of England, I believe give them a 20 pound note and they have to give you the that amount in gold if, if, our, right. if our money is backed by gold which I don't think it is is it not because that's the Bank of England they've got loads and loads of things of gold oh shit I've got a note I can get a note no it's a fiat currency Sorry, it, it's well the same way the stones are its value was determined only by its continued exception in the national and international economy. So now it's not actually backed by gold, it's just a fiat currency. So it just has theoretical value. But at one point it was. So maybe the quote is left over from like a older, no, no. more antiquated no, no. time. So that was just me thinking about the the value of it, but the the actual quote on the on the money is I promise to pay the bearer on on demand, the sum of twenty pounds. So this is actually like it's the cashier of the Bank of England, who is saying, "I promise, whoever has this note, I will give them twenty pounds." Yeah. It's Which saying, like, "It's saying, trust me, I do have twenty quid in the bank." Exactly, but it's like, but I'll just give you this nothing. piece of paper is, just. To... Yeah. So yeah, is that type of thing of like it's almost like in computer. Like they, like, they call it like a fiat currency. Is it? Hmm. It's just. The, it only has value because we all say it has value, as opposed to being like actually valuable. Like, it's like a pointer. It's like I didn't have the money, but I know where the money is. Like, I know where the twenty pounds is, but I don't have the twenty pounds with. Me. And we all just agree that you have that. We go, yeah, we all agree with you. Yeah, because there's even there was even a case of um of the uh, of one of these rye stones. Being while it was in transport, the it like falling off the ship, and sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Whoa. But it didn't matter because everyone agreed that that stone is still at the bottom of the ocean, so the ownership could still be transferred. Because you're like, I have a rye stone. It's just at the bottom of the ocean, and everyone goes, "It's true, he does." <laughs> we all we all agree. Like, it's down. It's not moved, is it? It's at the bottom. <laughs> Johnny says there's a stone at the bottom of the ocean and I believe him. <laughs> he says he's got a stone at the bottom of the ocean that's worth like a million quid. So we're all just going to accept he has a million quid. <laughs> Man, that's a con waiting to happen, isn't it? Could you imagine just like showing up on Yap for the first day? Is it Yak or Yap? Yap. Why showing you? up on Yap on the first day and you be like, hey yo, I've got a stone. I've got some big boy stones. I've got some big ass stones. They're just <laughs> at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> and yeah, that's well, just like, obviously everyone has to agree that you have it, but. Yeah, but that's just. But people do it. Everyone saw it happen, so. People are idiots. You can manipulate them. But yeah, now they've changed to like the US dollar mainly. Shame, in it? Such a shame. Which is, a, which is a similar idea of currency. Yeah. Just a bit more convenient than these stones. It's another one of the things where, like, the US dollar is, like, the US economy is not only um, sort of important to the US, but also everyone that uses the US dollar, which I think is, like, it's one of the, it's the most prolific currency across the world. So yeah, if Trump screws up the economy, then it doesn't just screw up the economy for the United States. It screws the globe. Because if the US yeah. currency devalues, then suddenly like loads of nations which are just using their money also devalue yeah and not only that like a lot of currencies are also backed against the dollar yeah you can have a currency's value that is set to be half of the dollar or something so if that drops yours will drop do you know what I mean yeah 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 like exchange rates and everything yeah ridiculous 
So we don't want to mess up the US economy. We don't want, do you want 2008 yeah. all over again. If only they had a um, very robust system that always puts someone who's responsible in charge. If only. If only. So we've had, we've had an interesting story about Yap. We've yeah. had two interesting stories about Yap. Yeah. Is there anything about the other ones? The love stick. What's the love sticks? The love sticks. Hmm. Um, well, the love... just sticks and fluff. <laughs> no. So, in the past, and this was done on Chuck, what would, um, what they would have done if you was, like, wanting to get with a lady, you would carve a stick, right? What are you laughing at? It's just the fact you give a lady a stick if you love them. You poke her with a stick if you love her. No. If you really love her. Really? <laughs> That's what the love sticks You're killing are. me. Nah. You carve these love sticks and you spend like all day carving love sticks. And the girls will see her and they'll see what patterns you got and they're like looking like, what ones have you got? And, uh, <laughs> what, like, what, what ones have you carved out of wood? <laughs> so they're going to run. They're poking each other with sticks. No, the girls don't do it. Okay. They're just the blokes. The blokes spend all day like carving their. Um, their love sticks and the girls walk around looking at what blokes carve and what like what designs he going for right. and, and then at night when it's dark and that the guy will go up to the girl and poke her with the love stick and then like she'll have a feel and like, remember what stick it was and be like if she likes him she'll pull the stick in deeper and if she doesn't like him she'll reject the stick and push it away that just got way creepier and that's how it used to so be. they can't see him well I've heard conflicting points I've heard ones where it is like they do just like they like do um, have the stick and then they go like they can see them and go oh you stab me with the stick like no and other ones I've seen where like it's more like later and darker at night so they can't really see the person as well but they can it's rem- probably somewhere in between like it's like at twilight so you they can't remember see the like detail. the feeling of the st- like they've seen the car <laughs> they remember the feeling of their stick the Jess, and they pull that stick it. in deeper. You're, the gesture to... you're doing to mind this, no one can see this. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I <laughs> but... just thought. <laughs> uh... <laughs> All I'm saying is, if anyone's ever wanted to do dirty stuff with Rob's stomach, they are. They would be <laughs> in the mood right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> So, yeah. the basic, the basic is... They got these love sticks, yeah, right? And they poke each other. <laughs> yeah, basically, they have these love sticks. They poke. The guy will then poke the girl. And if the girl likes it, for them, they'll pull them and pull the stick in deeper. If they don't like it, they'll reject it. They don't do that anymore, though. They just That's do, like... That's so gross, though. They just do, like, normal, like, Tinder and, like, texting and stuff now. They have Tinder in the Federated States of Micronesia.